question, what's a conscience? The conscience is a part of a human being that is a connection between the mind of a human being, the soul, and I want to put the spirit as well there, your spirit. But the conscience inhabits in a human being the soulish region. And when I say the soulish region is the soul of a man or it's the emotions of a man, both spiritual emotions and the regular emotions. So it basically involves your mind as well. So your mind is a natural faculty, right? It's, it's a kernel flesh, the brain, but that connects us to our very living soul so that the emotion you feel in the spirit and sometimes it's reflected in the in the natural emotion we call that the conscience the conscience so what does the bible say about the conscience it says that the conscience is a natural faculty any human being that is born of a woman that everyone who ever lived who is in the world today has a conscience so it's it's something that we that is innate you are born with it you don't acquire it but you're born as a child with with a conscience and I just wanted us to say as a Christian why is this so important and I know not everyone is a Christian who's listening to me tonight how is the conscience important for all humanity it's a very very amazing uh, faculty that the Lord has given every human being uh, but I have not heard many you know preachers addressing this topic and telling Christians and telling us how we should behave how we should we should take advantage of what is freely given to us by the by the father by using the conscience as a tool in our faith walk because the faith walk is not easy it's a journey it starts it's, it, faith is a journey that ends with reality that is heaven and life after life so this journey we need tools and the lord has freely given us the conscience so the conscience from what the holy spirit revealed to me i have summarized it as a mini judge mini judge what do i mean by a mini judge god is the ultimate judge of all humanity jesus christ is the one who is going to judge all the souls that have ever lived on this planet and to as of today as of today and going forward every every human being will be judged by jesus he is the ultimate judge but the lord has given us something we call a mini judge it's a semi judge it's your conscience it's my conscience so it's a very important tool indeed as often said we are not supposed to be judging others but first we should judge ourselves using the conscience so the conscience is a very beautiful faculty and stay stay with me because tonight i'm gonna just take you through scriptures a lot of scriptures that's why i have my book because as the lord gave me the topic i realized this one i need my notes it looks so simple but i need my notes so i'm just looking at, at my notes and the first thing that i noted I have just defined what is the conscience as a mini judge and just to make it simple or simpler for us to understand it, it is it's it's a purity ohmmeter you know what I mean an ohmmeter is just something that measures something let's take a, an example so we can understand like a speedometer you know a speedometer of a car starts from zero maybe to a maximum let's say a maximum of 200 so that's a ohmmeter. It measures the speed. So the purity ohmmeter or our standing with God meter, which I'm calling purity ohmmeter of our soul is measured by our conscience. And I'm going to assume like a speedometer because everyone understands a speedometer. It starts from zero to the highest. So zero means I'm going to be referring this often so zero means we are not pure and this is a purity level so the meter should be reading pure pure not so pure middle and not pure this is zero 
So our purity ohmmeter should be reading pure. This should be the location of the conscience. And that's why the first thing the Holy Ghost told me that the, the, the conscience of a human being accuses us or excuses us. So we are excused or accused by the meter that's already in our soulish region, in our mind and our soul. It accuses us, oh, guilty or not guilty. Guilty, not guilty. Perfect. So we understand that we carry that ability to have a mini judge that we should be judging ourselves. I'm going to dive straight to the Bible because I don't like giving up points that came from me or from the air. All is from the word of the living God. That is the true canon of the word of God. And quickly, if you can note down Romans chapter 2 verse 14 and 15, that's where we we, we understand that it's a natural faculty. Paul says, he says, everyone has a conscience, all humanity. You can get it from Romans 2, 14 and 15. And that's where you get, you, you get to hear that the, our consciences accuse us or excuse us. You know what I mean? And then I'm gonna uh, give another scripture that is 1 Timothy, verse one and no, chapter 1 and verse 19 where Paul says that we need to have a good conscience we need to have a good conscience if we don't have a good conscience he says we will fail and what is this failure our faith journey I remember we said that faith is a journey that has a beginning some of us have not started I say you should always start with Jesus Christ by being born again that's when you start and then it's a long walk with Christ it says the only reason we could fail is ha not having a good conscience your meter is either broken or not sensitive you know what I mean like if you have a car let's say if your car speedometer is not working you can't drive it because you would not know how how fast or slow you're driving you might get a fine you might get arrested for over speeding so you need a good gauge remember we call it a mini judge or a purity o meter you need to have it working it's called a good conscience you get that from first timothy chapter 1 and verse 19 and now i want to bring about john chapter 8 and verse 9 guys listen this is where a group of religious people brought out an adulterous woman to jesus christ because the law those days the law of moses was like if you were caught doing adultery or being in, involved in adultery you were to be stoned but they just brought the woman so mo most people wonder where was the man <laughs> so when they brought this prostitute to Jesus Jesus never answered but he was drawing something even up today it's a mystery people really wonder what was Jesus drawing not accusing the woman and not talking to the crowd except he told them whomsoever has never sinned let him be the first one to throw a stone then he bent down and wrote something for the purpose of today's sermon I'm going to say this is not what he did, but this is just for us to understand. He wrote the word on the ground, conscience. Conscience. You know what the Bible says? When Jesus was writing something, which I'm implying it's conscience today, the Bible says the people, consciences were convicted of their sin and they left one by one. The Lord allowed their conscience to come alive by writing down, buying some time. What does that reveal today for today's sermon? In the presence of God, in the presence of Jesus, our meters become service. They work perfectly. See, the, the, those people before, when they brought the prostitute, they were not feeling guilty they felt justified to, to, to murder and throw stones to this woman what changed 
their conscience because in the presence of God Almighty he was not even talking to them he just allowed the natural faculty of the conscience to work and they realized oh my god me too I'm supposed to be stoned where is the man the, it became active the Lord activated the consciences of these folks and these folks when the conscience the purity all all meters started working they realized they are equally guilty and they left the woman all of them left but I'm happy that they left with a conscience that was good remember we said Paul says we need to have a good conscience so Jesus fixed their conscience meter that's amazing to know the closer you are to the Lord Jesus Christ the closer the relationship between you and God the Father and the Holy Ghost the better your own meter is the sense the more sensitive you are to this meter of course if your relationship is not that good your own meter is going to be rusty it, it won't be working the way it should work so guys as I go forward remember you have a conscience and you need to take advantage and use it because because it's the mini judge of our soul now for those guys who are writing down and want to refer later if you go to the book of Acts chapter 24 and verse 16 Paul himself who is the man of God he was saying that he needed to have a clear conscience towards God and man he, he, he wanted to have a clear conscience. He wanted to make sure that he feels when he scanned himself. He felt, he felt pure before God and be, before man as well. So we need to have a good conscience towards God first and towards our fellow man. You know what I mean? Because you, you can know, you know if your conscience is accusing you in front of your wife. And you know you need to fix some stuff. You can pretend, but you know, your conscience will tell you, A, you need to fix this. You're, you're a child of God. You know you need to fix this. You can't feel that way. You, you can't harbor that grudge at all. You can't. You need to fix this. You need to forgive. The conscience will be talking to you. That's towards man. Again, when you go to God, you need to have that conscience. If your conscience is accusing you, it's calling you to action. And we are going to find that as we go along. Again, Romans chapter 13 and in, in verse 5, it says, if you're an angry person, it will disturb your conscience. A person who has a lot of anger, always angry and quick to anger, your conscience meter won't be working. You can get that from Romans chapter 13 and verse 5. So we have discussed how to get your conscience to be sharp. From the gospel that when you're in the presence of Jesus your conscience will be at its best so being close to Jesus all the times ensure that our conscience is telling us the truth and reading our soul purity towards God and towards man again in the book of Romans 14 23 and uh, 22 and 23 Romans 14 22 and 23 it teaches us here that that anything that is against your conscience is sin do you know how easy you if you wanted to ask me is doing this a some people ask is masturbation a sin is drinking a sin you find that question everywhere you go online is dating a sin but I want to ask, I want to say for me, for, for my own perspective, any, any person who asks that question always at all times implies that their conscience meter needs a bit of refreshing. Because if, if your conscience is working right, then you should know. Your conscience answers you all the time. If you, you ask yourself, is this good? Is this okay to do? Is this... An activity that I should carry your conscience if it's working right it'll tell you if that thing is wrong or right if it's a sin or not and we find that and I'm gonna repeat in Romans 14 22 23 it tells us whatever that's against your conscience 
is sin. For example, you wanted to slap somebody or to just reply rudely or curse someone. And then you hear in your spirit, you know, this is wrong. But you go ahead and do it. You have already sinned. Why? Your conscience, your mind, in conjunction with your soul, has a faculty that communicates the things of the spirit in the flesh. That's a conscience. You can know in the faculty of your mind and emotions that that's a sin. You know what I mean? So it's a very important faculty and we need to know that that faculty, conscience is calibrated. It's calibrated by faith. Your conscience can only be as good as your faith. So if your faith is this low, you will have a weak conscience. If your faith is this big, you will have a very clear conscience. So you understand that as we go along, like when you go to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 8 and verse 12, 7 to 12 the bible tells tells us that some people have a weak conscience but others have a, a stronger conscience but paul cautions us here and says those who have more faith and have a better conscience should not accuse those those who are weaker in conscience so and you find that those those people who have understood grace and their faith is very strong and they have understood the blood of Jesus they're quite liberal because they understand salvation is free and they might be a bit liberal but others are very conscientious you know conscientious because they might have a little bit of a weak conscience and they might even appear a little bit legalistic you know what I mean but Paul cautions us that we should not pride ourselves because we have a very strong conscience and we find some other people who have a weaker conscience and we cause them to sin you know what I mean like that that's where Paul says that our liberty is actually limited to the other person's conscience and I want to explain this a little bit like if for example you find a Christian who doesn't eat pork because he goes back to the Old Testament where pork was prohibited and his faith tells him to not to eat pork and if he eats pork he feels like he has sinned but that's according to his faith because your conscience can only be as good as your faith and your faith is based on the knowledge of the Word of God so the more you know the more faith you have and the more stronger conscience you have you know what I mean so you might find a person like that that's because you eat pork because you understand through the Word of God that as long as you pray for something it's it's clear for you you should not blame the other person and you should not eat in his presence making him feel bad or sane you know what i mean so we, love supersedes all this type of argument you know what i mean that's what paul says um, paul says in first corinthians 8 7 to 12. so be careful remember not to your conscience is more 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 very more personal to you do not do not embed it on others and judge others just because you are more liberal in your conscience you know what I mean so love supersedes all that stuff when it comes to others but so uh, as I'm bringing this topic today I want to say conscience is more of you and God it helps you more than judging others so don't use your conscience to judge others let it be for you and you only and take advantage of what God has given us freely uh, I guess I have given a lot of materials concerning the conscience I just want to see here if there is anything that I have uh, that I have left yeah in the in the book of Luke chapter 12 and verse 48 it says when much is given much is required remember if you know much and your faith is that much and your conscience is so clear then the responsibility towards you and the burden is is heavier it's actually heavier than others so you're required to be more uh, more of a leader and a teacher and more is required of you so the less you're required to judge others and the more you're required to love others so it's important to know that one 
And I think I should mention this because, you know, the Lord gave me this one. That Paul, in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 4 and 4 to 5, Paul says that he checked his, his conscience and he concluded that he judged himself okay. But the, yet he goes, goes ahead and says, but Jesus is the ultimate judge. So Paul oftentimes checked his conscience before prayer, before going to God, and he felt okay. He felt, yeah, I think I've repented. I, I, I'm, I'm clear to go to God. I don't need to do repentance. But yet, yes, he used that faculty of conscience. But that does not mean that that's, our consciences are the ultimate judge. We said that in the beginning. Jesus is the ultimate judge of all humanity, but we should take advantage of our consciences. And having said that, I think I have so much so, you know, uh, brought what I wanted to say, the most important point concerning the conscience. Uh, and let me just bring in another apostle so that we can be on the same page. In the book of 1 Peter, chapter 3 and verse 21, Peter says, we need to have a good conscience towards God. So it's not just Apostle Paul, and these are people who walked very closely to the Lord. They, they, physically, they, 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 they were with the Lord, and thereafter, they were full of the Holy Ghost. They're talking of conscience. This is Apostle Paul. This, this is Peter. Remember, we talked about Jesus and the adulterous women and the conscience of people. So we do see that conscience is something we need to take care about. And I'm just going to bring in some kind of like a summary. What's the work of a good conscience? How does that help you and me? A good conscience leads us to repentance. Because once you know you have done something and your conscience is accusing you, it hasn't excused you. If your conscience excuses you and you're clear, you don't need repentance. If your conscience is accusing you, then you need to repent. So a good conscience leads us to repentance. A good conscience leads to healing. Why? Because we don't carry the guilt and shame. So we have this kind of like psychological. Psychologically, you have the peace and the quietness of heart because your conscience is pure. No stress. You're in harmony. Your soul, your spirit, your body, your mind, your physical emotions and your spiritual emotions are in harmony so it brings about good healing conscience leads to conversion why because the bible says the bible says that before we come to christ our consciences are dead and when we preach like i'm preaching right now if you don't know christ the first thing you feel the holy ghost awakens your conscience and you realize you're a sinner that leads you to repentance to uh, once a repentance you have repented that's you be, you become born again you become a child of god you become a, a a a follower and a disciple of jesus christ so conversion starts with a good conscience the conscience relies on the holy spirit as you mature in your christian walk as I am walking towards maturity, coming from being a baby, taking milk of the word, but I'm trying to eat the meat and take some meat from the bone. As I mature, as you mature, we're supposed to rely on the Holy Spirit to impress upon our consciences, to, show, to, read, to help us read our consciences and examine ourselves. So a good conscience relies on the Holy Spirit. A good conscience, it gives us assurance that we are right with God. Do you want to know if you're right with God? Just examine yourself. Examine yourself. You can stay still, be alone, and just examine yourself. Scan yourself. How do you scan yourself? It's not in the faculties of the mind. It's a conscience. Ask the Holy Ghost, oh Holy Spirit, impress upon my conscience to see what I've done wrong. And trust me, you will know one by one where you were rude to somebody, where you 
you had contempt and disdain for somebody, where you were selfish, where you were supposed to give and you did not give, where you were lazy, you were supposed to pray and you did not pray, where you had offense against a brother or a sister, where you were lustful with your eyes or the body, it will show you. The conscience will tell you and that should lead you to repentance. So if your conscience excuses you, then you know that you're right with God. Conscience gives us confidence in prayer. You know that the reason why some people can't pray is because the conscience is accusing you. And because you have not repented, you see the confidence to go before God is destroyed. There is an erosion of that confidence. Why? Because the conscience is heavy. It's already reading guilty, but you have done nothing towards bringing it back to purity by repentance. So if you have not repented and your conscience is accusing you, there is no way you can you can have confidence in prayer. That's why you find some folks when you, you go for family meetings, they say, oh, Peter, help us to pray. He can't because he knows the conscience is telling him guilty as charged. <laughs> So if you want to have that confidence, you have to train your senses, spiritual senses. And this is particularly the conscience to be very sensitive and to repent immediately. Don't wait another day before you repent. So you can have the confidence to go to God the next minute, the confidence to go to God in the next prayer session that you're going to tomorrow or in the next 10 minutes. So. Do you, do you know when Adam and Eve fell? Do you know why they ran away from God? Because their conscience, their conscience accused them and they knew they were wrong. But they, they did not ask God to, to, to forgive them. They went ahead and defended themselves and hid themselves. That's the shame of a guilty conscience. So do you want to have confidence towards God and man? Repent of your sins. Do you know who can cleanse your evil conscience? The blood of Jesus. How do you come to the blood of Jesus? You accept him as the Lord and Savior, you follow him and he purges, he will purge your evil conscience and make it clean and he'll be very sensitive to sin. If you looked at something that you, you are not supposed to look, the conscience will tell you, oh, this is not good. Then you say, Lord, forgive me. You stop looking back to purity. Remember, purity, O meter. So as Christians, we should desire to have a strong conscience rooted in a strong faith and in the knowledge of the scripture. So faith, knowledge of the scripture and a conscience, they work together to help us end our faith journey. So guys, examine your conscience every day. Examine your conscience before you take the Lord's Supper. That's a communion before communion every communion where we partake of the, 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 the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, examine your conscience. If your conscience is not clean, don't take it until you repent. But you can repent there and then and take the body. And repentance is not just repenting for that second. Repentance means turning away from that sin. So if you're, for example, lasting and you say, Lord, forgive me, I, I'm lasting over there the Lord will forgive you, but it necessarily calls for you to stop and turn away from lust going forward. You know what I mean? Yeah, so repentance, repentance is for now and forever, and you turn away from your sin, and you wait for the Lord and call upon the Lord, the Lord to, to help you in this faith journey. So, and we said rely on the Holy Spirit for the Holy Spirit for guidance and guys I just want to say I just want to bring a point this is not for Christians but it's, it's just for for knowledge you have heard of one term that is called reprobates the reprobates are people who have deliberately and knowingly seared their conscience they know they have the conscience and they know that my conscience is going to, to charge me guilty. And I know if I open up to my conscience, that God is going to heal me. I have to change my ways. But because they're not ready to change their ways, 
they seal, they lock their conscience. It's called the paradox of the paradox of the sinner. The paradox is you know you're sick, you know there is a medicine, but because you want to remain sick in your victim, in your victimhood, like I just want to be sick because I'm enjoying the sickness. I'm enjoying the, the attention I'm getting. I don't want to be healed and, and have this responsibility and I just want to be be be, be, be pampered and be stay insane it's it gives me pleasure to be surrounded and to be to be taken care of so you don't really want to get healed it's a paradox of, of someone who is sick but doesn't want to get healed healed so that's why that's why the Bible says that's why the Bible says reprobates have a seared conscience with iron so that they don't receive healing because they love pleasure more than God so don't wait until when your conscience is dead dead and seared because at that point it may be too hard to come back to God so take care of your conscience today when it's still daylight take care of your conscience when you can find God and find God when he can be found so brothers and sisters I know this was a little bit long and I had to rely on my notes, but I needed to hit some specific points. You have a conscience. Use it every day. The Holy Ghost uses it as a contact point. In your soulish region, in your brain, in your physical emotions, you feel shame and a sorrow. But that's not to kill you. The guilt, I don't want to call it guilt. I'm going to call that godly sorrow. Godly sorrow is that conscience feeling oh i sinned oh what did i do it, it begs it takes you to that question why did i do it mm, lord forgive me it's it's a nice sorrow that leads to repentance it's not the guilt that shames you to to depression and and and, and prison it's a sorrow it's a heavy sorrow that causes you to mourn in the spirit and to seek repentance from the blood of jesus use your conscience every day we have all the tools guys we need to get saved when you get to heaven god will show us you had your conscience i give you a conscience you needed to use it the evangelist taught you about it if you're sensitive the holy spirit you don't need to ask someone is is doing this this a sin just work on your conscience the holy ghost will let you know what what you should do and what you should not your conscience can only be as good as your faith and your faith can only be as good as your knowledge in the Word of God God bless you guys keep you and save you and those who are not saved cry call upon the Lord today is a day of salvation look for uh, a local church where you can where you can worship in truth and in spirit and join the journey this journey of faith that we are headed towards heaven. God bless you. God keep you. I love you all. Take care. Jesus loves you above all. Thank you.